is to be in the house of the God this morning. Hey, why don't we give him some praise? Why don't we stand and give him some praise? Lord, we love your name. We're thankful for the power that's in your name, Jesus. Oh, you are holy, Lord. We worship you this morning.
Come on, why don't you just say the name? Oh, we love you, Jesus. You're worthy of our praise, God. Oh, there's power when you call on his name. confused where the power is it's not in three titles it's in the name amen thankful to be in the house of God this morning we are going to go ahead and worship him in our giving it's a blessing to be able to give back to the kingdom of God amen we're going to go ahead and take up our offering Lord we're so thankful for your presence in this place God we ask you Lord that your spirit would move in this place, Lord, that your will would be done in this place, God. We ask you to bless this offering and the remainder of this service in the name of Jesus.
It is here. It is here that hope is found. Praise God. It is here that when you open your eyes, you can see the glory of the Lord. And I would ask that you would open your eyes. We have already prayed that you might see. I know people come into the house of the Lord with dilemmas, with pain, troubles, and trials. But if you would just open your eyes and see. I know there's a lot against you. I know there's a lot against us. In the whole world, sometimes it feels like it's caving in. But we've already prayed that there are those of us that are here that we can see the enemy. We see the, the trial. We experience those too. But we also see that there are more that are for us than that are against us. That when we open our eyes and we begin to see spiritually, that we can see that there is a host of angels that surround us, that are fighting for us. And that's the reason why we can lift our hands and we can shout and we can proclaim that hope is here, faith is found, the glory can happen. And I would pray right now that you would lift your need to the Lord. Say, God, open my eyes and let me behold the hope that is set before me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let that river flow, God, right now into my soul and let it overflow in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want you to pray until you begin to overflow, until you are filled to the point where you are overflowing in the name of Jesus.
praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When they left Jerusalem after their tragic few days of events, and they saw that their Messiah crucified, they'd heard reports that he was risen from the grave, but they didn't believe it. They were like, no, we saw him die. The Bible says as they walked, and they were discussing the happenings of the previous day's events. They were talking about Jesus, talking about Calvary. They were talking about the cross, the crucifixion, the gory, uh, the gore of it all, I should say. Jesus walked up beside them, and he began to walk with them. And he said, what are y'all talking about? And they said, have you not heard what happened? And he says, no, tell me. And they told him. And he says, thou fools, have you not heard? And he went back and began to expound all the way from the books of Moses, all the way from Genesis, I wish I knew what he said to them. I wish I understood the conversation that took place on their path to Emmaus. The Bible doesn't tell us. It just said he expounded, opened their eyes and opened their minds and began to explain some things. And it got to the point where he would have turned and went off and they were going to go to their house and they invited him in. And there, they didn't know who he was. They, he, the Bible says that, that somehow their, their eyes were cloaked, that they couldn't recognize him. And so he was just walking with them and talking with them. And when he broke bread in their home, the revelation came. He brought them through all of the Scripture. To me, it was likened unto John, who... who who walked with him, and then when, the, when then John saw him on the Isle of Patmos, he had this great revelation. And there they saw him, and they, and they said this, and as this is not part of my notes this morning, but I, I was just moved just now. And they said one to another, did our hearts not burn within us? while he talked with us by the way on the path and while he opened to us the scriptures. I want to talk to you this morning. Did our hearts not burn within us as he walked with us on the path? I want to talk to you this morning about the power of the walk. The power that we gain and receive, this divine power, this divine anointing that we obtain through the walk. Father, we love you today, and we ask you, Lord God, that you would speak to each one of us here this morning individually, as only you can, that as we expound here the Scriptures, I pray, Lord, that your spirit would burn within us and that we would receive a revelation that is just specific for just each one of us. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you for standing. And now I'm going to get to my scripture. You can be seated. I'm going to turn first to Hebrews and uh, the chapter 11. If you don't know, I'm not sure. Praise God. I probably say this every Sunday. I probably just stop. I don't know where I'm going. I got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I just got to weed my way through it. So, uh, praise God. Just walk with me if you would. Hallelujah. The book of Hebrews is um, uh, a 
fascinating book about faith. And here's, it starts off with this in Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 1. And uh, I know that you probably know that. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Everybody say hoped. This is something that the patriarchs of old, and he goes on. Okay, let me finish the Scripture here. He says, it's the evidence of things hoped for, uh, or the, uh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by this hope, by this faith, uh, the elders received a good report. They obtained this. This was their power in their hope and in their waiting and in their anticipation for. They were given a promise, uh, but they hadn't got it yet, and so they just learned to put their trust in God. They per- learned to put their hope in the Lord, and this is what he's saying is this is faith. By this faith, this, uh, this, this hope, this is how they obtained this good report. And then he goes through, and I don't have time to do this this morning, but the entire chapter of uh, Hebrews 11, he, he illustrates this fact that these individuals, he talks about Abraham and Moses and Abel and all of these, Enoch, he talks about all of these individuals of, of these high-profile uh, individuals of the Old Testament and how they gained favor and power with God through their actions. He goes through some of, some, some of these mundane things uh, that, Mo, that Noah built an ark. He went to work. He, he began to do what God had asked him to do, and he just di- daily did what he was. Uh, Abraham left the city, and he walked with God, and he moved, and, and he, he goes in. But, but his first person, or a second, I should say, let me, let me no, let, let me get to the scripture here. Five, it's on down. Oh, let me say this, verse number six. Okay, verse number five. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that believeth, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, I want you to understand that the the writer of the book of Hebrews, he put that, but without faith it's impossible to please God, that we have to diligently seek him on the heels of Enoch's testimony. And now, what was Enoch? That he was so holy and so godly and so um, appreciated or whatever by God that God says, I don't want him to see death. What was it about? What was Enoch's testimony? We really don't know a lot about him. There wasn't uh, 10 chapters written about him. There wasn't a whole book. Uh, Well, I know there is a book, but it's not canonized. So, uh, the book of Enoch, I wouldn't recommend that. But anyway, uh, what was it about Enoch? Anybody know? What was his testimony that he, what, would, what did he do? Huh? He pleased God. But what was the Old Testament says that because Enoch walked with God? That was it. That was, that was the, that is the extent of Enoch's mention in the Bible, that Enoch walked with God. If that is his testimony, then that is all he did is he walked with God. And because he walked with God, God said he will not see death. And this got his name written here in the the great hall of faith. And it says, I'm I'm talking about Enoch here when I say that we, we have got to believe that God is who he says that he is. And we have got to believe in the promises. And we've got to believe in the word. And we've got to believe in the spirit. And we've got to understand that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Friend, if you want power, if you want anointing, if you want the divine favor of God in your life, you've got to learn to walk with the Lord. Praise God. And uh, so now let's turn to Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. 
This is where we see the first man who lost his walk with God. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. Is it up there? And they heard the voice of the Lord of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And where was Adam? Hiding. As God came down, just like on the road to Emmaus, to walk beside those and said, hey, let me expound some things here. Let me interject. Let me download some stuff into your spirit here, guys. Where was Adam when God decided to walk in the garden? He was hiding. He had left, and the reason why he was hiding is because he had not obeyed the gospel. He had not obeyed the, uh, the commands of the Lord. He, he was disobedient, and therefore his, his guilt and his shame caused him to, uh, to lose the victory, so to speak. And so, let's, let's turn with me then to Isaiah. I've got to get all through this so we can start preaching here. Isaiah 40 and 27 40 and 27, you know you're not apostolic preaching when the kids are stealing the show. No, I'm, don't, don't please. They're, I would rather have a house full of crying babies. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love it. I'm just saying, when we start to hear the rappers change, you know, that means uh, I'm getting there. Praise God. I'll, I'll get there. We'll, we'll start preaching in a minute. Isaiah 40 and 27. So here, here's what happened is Adam lost, Adam lost the path. He lost the way, the walk. Now Enoch found it. He, Enoch found this. He, well, for whatever reason, Enoch didn't have the same fear that Adam had. Uh, because I believe that Enoch knew who God was. I believe that Enoch had a different perspective or perspective of God. And therefore he was not afraid to uh, walk with the Lord and to, and to hear His voice and to run to Him and to diligently seek Him and to find out who He was. And uh, this is as complicated as it gets. It really is. In fact, here we see uh, verse 27, they, they say, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and why do you speak, O Israel, that my way is hidden from you? Why do you say that? Why do you say that it's hidden just because you haven't found it? doesn't mean it's hidden. He says, my way, he says, uh, hid from the Lord, and my judgment has passed over my God, uh, or, or my, uh, the things that are owed to me are passed over, that I haven't, I haven't found my walk with God. I haven't found my way. Why have you said that it's hid? And he says, hast thou not known, and hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases, cr increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, he said, I see the weakness of humanity. It doesn't, it affects the young, the old, the, it doesn't matter what walk of life you are, you're going to find if you lose your way, you will faint. But he says this, he says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But they that wait upon the Lord. Now, what does that mean to wait? Well, we understand it means to wait. Hang on. I'll be there in a minute. Stay in the truck. That's waiting. But that is not the extent of the definition of that word. The extent of the definition of that word is tied closely back to Hebrews chapter 1. For uh, when he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. By it, Enoch was translated out of here because he walked with God. 
And this word wait means not only just to wait and hang on, but it also means to put your hope into something, to put your trust into something. So hope is more than just, well, I got to wait on God. No, it means you're putting your hope in it. It means putting your trust in it. This is what he's saying is, you know what? When you're walking with God, that means you are acknowledging He acknowledging him for who he is and you are going to diligently seek after him because your hope is in him. Your hope is in the promises. Praise God. And so he says, and here, he says, listen, if you, if you learn to walk with God, if you begin to walk with him and listen and, and hearken your ear unto that spirit and, and say, God, the spirit, the spirit is listening and I want you to speak. And the, 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 the Bible says that the Lord knocks on the door and he's just waiting for you to open it. If you will open that door and just say, God, I want you to walk with me. He said, I'll give you strength to walk. And if you learn to walk with me, then you'll learn to run with me. And if you learn to run with me, then I'll put you on eagle's wing and you will soar with God. Does anybody want the anointing of God? Does anybody Anybody want the power of God? Do you want the apostolic anointing of the Holy? Then you need to learn how to walk. You need to learn how to wait. You need to learn how to do this every day. Praise God. Hallelujah. If I could have just a little bit more, I don't know how it sounds out there, but I'm killing my voice up here. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't feel a preach coming on, so just crank it up. <sighs> Psalms 27. Thank you. Psalms 27. And uh, verse number 11, we're going to find this verse here. Teach me thy way, O Lord. What does that mean? What's the way? It's the path. Teach me thy path. If We, we just prayed this a minute ago when we, we said, I wish I could learn what Jesus spoke to those men on the road to Emmaus. I want to be on the same road that Jesus wants to walk on. Teach me. This is what the psalmist said. Teach me thy path. I don't want to I don't want to walk down any other road in life but I want to walk down the path of the Lord. I want you to show me your way. The the way is not hidden. Why do you say that my way is hidden? He said it is not hidden. You just have to wait. Put your faith, put your hope. If you just do that, you will find the path. And here the psalmist said, the psalmist said, teach me and show me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of mine enemy, because there is so much treachery in life. I can't walk down any other road, but I know that I will find peace and I will find salvation in the path of God. I want to walk with you. Deliver me not over to my will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen against me, and such breathe out cruelty. He said, I had fainted. Unless, remember, he said, Isaiah, they will faint. They will get weak. They will stumble. They will fall. He says, I almost fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But there's something I've learned that you've got to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He says it twice. Wait on the Lord. I say, you better wait. Show me thy path. This is the secret to finding strength in God. To not faint is to find that path. Praise God. And aren't you thankful that that path is not hidden? Praise God. People really struggle, I think to live victoriously in Christ because they don't take time to wait. And I don't mean wait in the truck. I mean to put your hope in, to put your whole conscience, your entire being in Him. What do you seek after? Do you seek after position, promotion, funds, and money, and all of these things? He said, if you would just seek the kingdom, you will find the path. All those other things will be added unto you. But if you would just seek me, if you would just turn your face and towards me, praise God. We want the power from heaven, but we don't want the face. We're not asking for the acceptance. We just want his hand to heal, to deliver, to do all of these things. But we want God, we want you to show me your path. I want to walk down the road that you want to walk. Here's what we do. I think a lot of times we struggle with victory and strength and power. It's because we ask God to go with us where we're going. 
God, I've got these plans today, and I want you to bless them. Why don't we ask God, God, where do you want my foot to step next? God, where do you want my heart to go? Where do you want my mind to go? What do you want me thinking about during the day? What do you want me, what activities, what people do you want me to be talking to? Where do you want me to go? What scripture in the Bible do you want me to, what do you, what word do you have for me today, Lord? I want my heart to burn within me. I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have been with me. Praise God. This is where strength comes from. Hallelujah. Show me thy path. Praise God. He will give us power to walk, to run, and to soar. Praise God. But it's His power. This is what I'm talking to you about, the power of a daily walk. A daily walk. We come to the house of the Lord and we shout on Sunday. But I think that our shout is sometimes, not all, I think sometimes for some of us our shout has lost its power because we have failed to wait on God all the rest of the days of the week. It reminds me of this, the Jericho story. Joshua was commissioned by God to take down the walls of Jericho, the walls of the enemy. This was the barrier that separated them from the promised land. Praise God. They had crossed over the second time, and they were ready. They were prepared. They were, they were full of faith. Uh, I would say they were walking with God, praise God, for the first time in many, many uh, generations. And uh, here, God's people, He says, now I want you to walk around Jericho six days. One time for six days. Right? Right? And so they walked, this is the power of the walk. They walked around six days. Now he says on the seventh day, I want you to walk around seven times. Blow the trumpets and shout and the walls will come down. Praise God. This is, this is what I'm, this is important. The, the, six, the, the six day walk. I don't believe they could have gone there and just began to shout. But sometimes I think they, uh, isn't it true that sometimes we want to skip the six-day walk? Hey, we want to shout the victory on Sunday, but we don't want to walk with God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I'm telling you what, if you're weary, but I've been going to church. Yeah, but you've been shouting without the walk. And the walls ain't going to come down. That what separates you from God, that what separates you from the promises that the Lord has for you individually is all in the walk. It's not in the shout. It's not in the, in the song. It's not in any of those things. It's not in how loud you can clap. It's not in any of the. It's in the walk. The power is not in the shout. The power is in the walk. Praise God. This is the key here. This is what he said. If you do the work for six days, then that seventh day there's going to be a working of the Spirit. If you do the walk, praise God, then I'll allow you to run and I'll allow you to fly on wings of eagles. If you want to get to the heavens, then you better learn how to walk on those six days. Here, God showed us this in creation. He says, I'm going to do all this work. I'm going to lay out this work, and every day I'm going to work six days. I did this on the first day, this on the second, third. I created the heavens, and I created the fowl, the air. I created, I created man on the sixth day. That's why man is the six is the number of a man. But then on the seventh day, he rested. And what does that mean? That means that on the seventh day, God went into a completely different dimension of, of the walking. He went into a completely different level. This is what God would tell us and refer to us, the Scripture would de de declare to us this screaming at us all through the Bible that seven, the seventh is, well, we all know what that means. It means oath. Seven in the Scripture means oath. It's God's promise. It's the oath. It is the operation of the Spirit. So he did all this work, and then on the seventh day, he says, now welcome to the power of the Spirit. Welcome to the completion and the work of the Spirit. That's the seventh. And so when they walked around the Jordan, uh, they walked around Jericho for six days, he says, it's the walk that's going to bring you to the dimension of the working of the Spirit. 
Praise God. It, it, it takes us all the way to this, uh, the, the, the seven times seven. It's seven days, seven times, and then the seventh day it was seven times, and that's 49, right? So when you completed the 49, this, is, this goes back to, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the year of Jubilee. In Israel, God set this precedent. He said after 49 years, the 50th year is the year of Jubilee. That's the year that the slaves go free. That's the year that you get your land back. That's the year that everything goes back the way that it used to be. Praise God. That's the 50th. When the 49 is complete, when the 7 times 7 is completed, then, then there's going to be a 50th. The 50th, the, the day after this, the, the, uh, the duration. That is going to be when the work of the Spirit takes place. There's another dimension that goes through. And this leads us all the way to Pentecost, doesn't it? When on Pentecost, they, they waited uh, the 50th. That's f- when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one place in one accord. They had tarried there. They had, they had done the waiting. And when the waiting was over, when, they had, when the fullness of time had come, God blew the trumpet. God made the sound. The wind came. And when the day of Pentecost, this was the work of the Spirit. Now watch this. Go all the way back to Jericho. And he says, you cannot, I don't want you to speak one word. You walk around for one time for six days. You walk around and you can't say one thing. But on the seventh day, on the 50th moment, then you will shout And the power is going to come in the shout. Now, here we are at Pentecost. And what did God give them? He gave them tongues. And he says, this is the working of the Spirit. And they opened their mouths and they began to praise the Lord with the evidence of speaking in another tongue. But I'm telling you what. If the fullness of time hadn't come, they would not be able to. The the promise came through the walk. Through the walk. You could not circumvent this. You couldn't uh, fast forward this. The power was in the waiting. The power was in the fullness of time. But when it finally came, their power of speaking in other tongues came in the walk. Praise God. So, this is the thing. Too many times we want to shout on Sunday, but we forsook the walk on the six previous days. We want the power without the weight. I know we love to shout, we love to proclaim, uh, but our relationship with God is more important and it's more about a walk and a weight than it is the shout. I think that either, there's two things that happen. We either come here and we shout and still don't get the victory or we've lost our shout altogether. And you wonder why. Why has my shout lost its fervor? Why is it that it doesn't move me the same way? And I would say, because you're hiding from the walk of God. You're like Adam who says, you know what, I've sinned. Anybody ever do that? You feel like you failed God, and so therefore you just shy away from God. When the Lord walks up beside you, you say, you know what, I'm turning the other way. I don't want to, I, I have failed you, I, I'm embarrassed, I'm, I'm ashamed, and, and all of those things, and, and then you find it yourself lost in the world, and you say, where is the path? Where is it? And here the Scripture is, why do you say, where's the path? Why do you say it's lost? Those who wait upon the Lord. Put your faith and put your hope in God. Put your trust in the Lord. This is where the power is going to come from. See, the voice of triumph comes only after you have defeated the enemy. The voice of triumph, think about that. The voice of victory, the shout of victory. So what we do on Sunday, this is the seventh day of the week. What we do on Sunday is we come here and we shout. I wish there was more shouting going on on a Sunday morning, I'll be honest with you. I wish there were more people coming in here victorious. But we see, we see us coming in here dragging. We, we come in here, I ain't got to shout. I'll let the others shout for me. I'll let the others go up to the front. I'll let the others worship. I'm just going to say, I'm just good to be here. I'm going to tell you, you're not waiting on the Lord. 
You're not walking with God on the other days of the week. You're seeking things that are are not the Lord. I'm telling you what, you can't walk with the devil on six days a week and then shout the voice of victory on Sunday. You've got to walk with God. You've got to walk with the Holy Ghost. You, You need to seek Him. You've got to find that path. Every day you ought to get up and you ought to pray, God, lead me in thy path. I want you to show me the righteousness where lead my steps, oh God, I pray. Let your word become a lamp unto my path that I may walk in your way. Seek his ways, seek his face, seek his, seek his uh, character, find out more. I want to find out as much as I can about God. And you do that every single day. You seek the power of God in your walk. You cannot sing the song of victory and walk with the enemy. Praise God. This is the new dimension. This is the dimension that you've got to get to. And on Sunday when you come to church, on that seventh day, This is the day of rest. I know Sabbath, all that. I don't want to get into all that. But this is the day that we set aside, and this is the day that we say, you know what? We are going to shout victory because because we have been, did our hearts, this this is what we ought to be doing on Sunday morning when we come together. Did our hearts not burn within us as we walked our way here this Sunday? As we walked on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, did our hearts not burn within us as we read the Word of God and as we expounded and as we studied and we searched it and we dug it out and we tried to find nuggets of of revelation and we prayed and we meditated upon Him and we said, God, speak to me today. It's Wednesday morning, but I I need to hear your voice. I need you to speak to me. I don't want to lay my head down tonight until I hear that still small voice of heaven. Just walk with me, God, I pray. Just walk with me. This is it. It's not hard. It is not hard. He says, my path is not hidden. It is, it is available for us all. Praise God. Let's stand together. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Isn't that what the Scripture? He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. This When you come to the house of the Lord on a Sunday, on the seventh day, and you're celebrating the fact that you walked through the the valleys, and you've walked through the trials, and you've walked through all the mess of this world, but you didn't get overtaken, you were not crushed, you were not pushed down, you were held up by the walk. I want to find, I want to ask Enoch. What the world, bro? What did you do to receive that favor from God? I I guarantee you it was not hard. People say, well, I don't know where, how do I find the path? How do I find the will of God? How How do I even do that? C.M. Beckton preached a sermon one time. I I heard a man, uh, he he, uh, alluded to it. I had not heard. I tried to find it, but I couldn't. But he he preached a sermon years ago on finding the path. And and he said, you know what? We don't appreciate this this terminology the way that they did in the Bible days because we don't really have paths anymore. We've got highways and airways and, you know, we got all these concrete roads. But in their day, paths were very I mean, they were all over the place. That's all you had was a path. But he said, the path of God, the path that you find the Lord on is not hard. But you just have to wait on Him. And again, I'm not talking about hang-ons, just be patient, God will eventually. No, that's not what I mean. And that's not what that means. It means to put your total trust here, here, here's what he said. Here's what he said. Uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. I didn't give this to you, but if you could find it. He says, acknowledge. This is it. This is as complicated as it gets. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. And he will. What's it say? Oh, you're going to find it. Trust in the Lord. Acknowledge. The other version says, acknowledge the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and 
in all thy ways. Acknowledge, there it is. And he shall direct thy paths. It's not hidden. Father, in your holy name, I came to the house of the Lord this morning to find the road. Maybe you got off of it. Maybe you got afraid. Maybe, maybe the devil has come, the, the enemy of your soul has come against you and said, there's no way you'll ever find your way back to the, to the road. And God is here. He's saying, I, I'm, I'm, I'm standing at the door. I'm knocking. It's, I'm ready to walk with you. I'm ready to just join up beside you. Put my arm around you and just begin right now. Does anybody want to say, you know what? I've been walking my own walk for too long. I want to walk the walk of the Lord. Every day. Come on, maybe you want to come up to the front and say, God, I'm going to make a commitment this morning. That 2024, the rest of this year, I'm just going to make a commitment. I'm going to read my Bible every day. I'm going to pray every day. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to find you every day. I'm not going to let my head rest in the night until I've heard your voice somehow, some way. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands and just ask the Lord to speak to us right here. In the name of Jesus. something from the Lord. Anybody need God to touch you today? Why don't you step up to the front? We'll begin to pray with you.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you, this, the message is not deep. It's not philosophical or theological. It's very simple. And God makes it so simple for us. He said, my path is not hidden. It's very easy. Just trust me. Walk with me. Join me. Acknowledge me. Wait. Pray. Find me. Consider me. In all the things that you do, consider me. When you drive to work, when you're at work, making decisions during the day, when you're talking to your spouse, your family, consider God. Include me in your thinking. He said, if you do that, I will walk with you. Well, he will direct your, I want to walk in his path, right? I want, I want him to reveal his path to me. Pray. But he said, I will do that. And you walk all those days and you will have power to run you will have power to fly. You will have power to call out. The walls will fall. Praise God. It's not in the shower. It's in the walk. But after you've walked six days, you will have power to shout. He will give you power to shout. And when you shout it out, the shout of victory, a release will come out of you. The spirit of heaven will begin to move through you. Hallelujah. Now, we don't shout on this side of glory. We don't shout victory like they shout a week, speak in other tongues. God will begin. You will be able to sing in tongues and pray in tongues. And the power will come again, and you will feel that same anointing that you felt that first time when you tarried and you waited, and God filled you with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, praise God. I want to acknowledge we have some guests here today. Not really. They're just, they've been away. And they've come home, praise God. So, Brother and Sister Smith, we're so glad you're here this morning. And Branda, where is she? Is she? Oh, they had to leave. They, have, they probably had to leave. Uh, but they had to leave because um, they had to go get uh, some stuff for the wedding. That's tonight at 5 o'clock. Right here. Praise God. So, uh, so I've been given permission to uh, ask you to, if you would like to be here for uh, Branda, or no, not Branda, uh, Jonathan and Jamie are going to be married tonight at 5 o'clock. Praise God. They've waited their 72 official hours from the day they got their license, so today we're doing it. Praise God. So you can be here if they want you to come, and, or if you can. Uh, it's going to be small. It's going to be very simple, but... It's going to be a wedding anyhow, and uh, so we're going to rejoice with them in the name of Jesus, and uh, I just wanted to make that announcement. Praise God. Be dismissed in Jesus' name, and we'll see you. Wait, wait. Wednesday night, we're going to do our breakouts, and I, I appreciate some of you going back into the survey and fixing uh, your comments, but if you haven't done that yet, please do that, and what I'm saying is I gave you three choices. Pick one. Pick one. Not say, boy, I want the marriage class, and my husband will go to the end time class, and that probably won't work out. I'm just saying. I don't... You, you, okay, but I and some of you picked all three. I don't know how you're going to do that. Okay, so pick the one you're most likely. You're not locked into it again, but pick the one you're most likely. It looks like right now, after you all have adjusted, it's about even all the way. So that's... We, we got to figure out how many seats to put in the classroom. That's all. We don't want to, we don't want 50 to show up and we only have three seats. All right. So we want to make sure we have room for everybody in the class. Praise God. So go on that survey online and, and click the whatever you want. Praise God.